Okay, so second take of this, I was not giving Nero as much credit as I probably should have. For some ungodly reason, I wanted to compare her to Muramasa and Takiru, which no. The best comparison we have is Saber Shiki, who a lot of people were super happy that she was finally able to black Rilu. Nero is in the same situation and just on paper, like there shouldn't really be a reason to use Nero. I mean, Shiki over Nero because what uh, Nero provides as a black rail looper is really weird talking about one hit arts as black rail loopers, but legitimately Nero just kind of has everything that Saber Shiki has for looping and just more, just more of it. Uh, I'll bring the comparison up later, but their, their kits now are a whole lot more similar in turn, if we're just talking about looping. If we're not talking about that, obviously Shiki has the insta-kill and Nero has anchor potential. And then Shiki also has like her like Kala Immortal shit going on too. So they both, they have completely different roles, but for the one role they overlap, they're extremely similar at it. Uh, all right. So Nero, OG Nero has all the costumes, like literally three different costumes. This is my favorite because it's like very Grecian or Roman. This one is just a meme one because of Carnival Phantasm. And then this one is just, I, I could imagine her wearing the Sinestra, like just serenading ha Hakuno. Oh, oh, those four years. Anyway, base attack average for a uh, four star, like 9.5. Like that is, it's not exactly, but it's, it's pretty damn close. And this is like the average four stars you want to look at. HP honestly wish was, this was a little higher just so she can do her job as an anchor better and make it even more difficult to pop, uh, proc the guts so that when she's anchoring, you can really stall out and make the six turns actually last. <clears throat> star weight, star gen, normal saber numbers, MP charge 0.84. First comparison I'm gonna bring to Shiki. Same MP gain and same hits on the arts card. So by default, without any other buffs, they should be looping almost exactly the same. And the thing about one hit uh, arts MPs, it's either you kill them or you don't. There is no overkill. So you are solely worried about just damage, which is like why they'd want black rail over any other CE because other CEs with MP gain and shit, they scale better with the number of hits of overkill. Um, whereas if you don't kill, you are definitely, you're not doing the wave. All right, uh, again, going to hit counts, extra attack, really good. Everything else is generic year one bullshit. Uh, yep, and we're just gonna move on. Okay, first skill was dog shit in year one. This is absolutely terrible as a skill by itself. These effects are good. They're just not good by themselves. So first buff, 30 battery, 20 arts on water side or city, and these are fairly common. I'm not gonna say these are the most uncommon things to be fighting in. Like, especially city, it feels like you fight there fairly often. Water side, it has to be actual water in the background. It cannot be like just a river of moving liquid. Oh, thank God we're not talking about Kiara. Um, <laughs> but in uh, the most recent Valentine's on JP, it was a chocolate river and it didn't count for water side when the servant on raid up actually got a bonus for being a water side whoops unfortunate yeah. we're talking about an extra character too that's actually funny all right second skill this got buffed last arcade collab i first recording i was losing my shit realizing they gave two complimentary buffs from the same fucking event literally imperial pr privilege awesome if you actually land this shit but you for nine years people weren't landing it i wonder why 
I wonder why. Oh, yeah, it's 60%. So, for a guaranteed heal and a chance at getting an attack and a defense buff, they decided to buff it and give her a consistent 30 arts buff and 10 stars per turn. Now, she was not black rail looping with this. It was not happening. Her, you were still brute forcing so much goddamn charge. But this gave you potential. Potential for a 30 battery and a 50 arts buff, along with a chance at a 44. But this is still very underwhelming because if you don't land this, you're probably not getting overkill. So you're probably not actually killing the enemy. So your loop is just not gonna work in general. So the third buff was just a three turn time, five turn guts at a, on a 10 turn cooldown. You arrive with six K HP. This is basically Herc spawn CE light, but Nero had the advantage that she was a, she was not a berserker. So if, as long as she was fighting Lancers, this kind of guts, she would not be dying. It would be very hard for a Lancer to be able to kill her, especially since she had two different skills on much shorter cooldowns that were able to heal her. By the time this came off cooldown, you had both Imperial Privilege and her first skill, giving her, I believe, 5k HP. Yeah, like 5.4k HP, and then you revive with the guts, and then you're back to 6k. Underwhelming, though. Uh, and in normal farming, you would never pop this. So, they up all the durations for this to six turns. They obviously did this because of Draco. Very nice nod. But the important thing is how, like what these effects actually are. So the guts upgraded from uh, five, three times five turns to three times six turns. Good. A little more wiggle room. Uh, so you really can like she can go down like first guts. She's able to stall. If you're able to stall, she can heal up and yeah it's just uh, more turns it's just more turns second effect if the guts procs you get 20 percent mp damage for six turns really and it's not just her guts it's any guts unfortunately this is not stackable with other guts so you ha you would have to give her another gut somehow uh but still awesome and it's a full cleanse too like good good like Anchor utility, farming utility. Now here, here's the real farming. No, not even farming. Both. This helps both. Increased buff success rate for six turns. Forty percent. Imperial privilege is guaranteed now. Not only that, you can pop this skill, pop these two, wait five turns. This effect is still up and you still get guaranteed Imperial privilege. This is, this is probably one of the most important parts of this buff for her to work as an anchor. Yeah, an extra turn is nice. Yes, getting MP damage for guts procking and a cleanse, awesome. But guaranteeing Imperial privilege, it's so, so much harder to kill Nero now even getting to the guts is going to be a challenge just because of this defense she, get, she just gets so much tank here she's only gonna need the guts after the skill goes off cooldown or goes on cooldown and then this is the literal cherry on top 50 percent mp gen or six turn farmer awesome anchor amazing because now on JP, you are just spamming the shit out of Mighty Chain. B, Q, A, and, you'll, and you might get your MP back. And you might get stars to make that turn even better. Guts procs, you do even more damage. There are just so many ways you can play around with a character like this. The six turn durations is honestly mind blowing. And again, we have got some of the best buffs coming out of this event specifically the original and the collab 
I believe last year it was Nero, uh, Da Vinci, Mordred, I think King Hassan too, and maybe like one other. This year, Satanta, Sheet Show, Nero, and all these buffs have either fixed core issues with the units or just been such fantastic buffs that they stand out on their own. This literally brings Nero above Shiki as a farmer. And Shiki's base attack isn't even that much higher than Nero's. At 120, they have around the same attack. Like, so. Yeah, no, their damage profile is almost identical. And because Shiki has a 40 arts, 25 attack buff, and only a 30 battery, like, the only advantage Shiki has is that she refunds 10%. That's her only advantage as a farmer. Nero just has more base stats. She has more stats that actually affect looping. Passives. Uh, 15% debuff res and 8% quick. She only has one quick card and it's only two hits, so it's literally nothing. So, a mistake I made in my original recording is that I said you needed mana loading. This is actually not the case because this morning I woke up to plushy black rail looping against all assassins with Nero starting from absolute zero. So because of, but this was double Castoria Oberon, so take that into consideration. But still, the fact that a one hit arts unit is able to black rail loop, even with the common double, uh, double Castoria Oberon, that's still groundbreaking for Nero. Night and day different, from how she originally released. Extra attack as an anchor, you'd, you'd want this, but I think for the sake of convenience, you probably should go mana loading because in events, it just makes it even easier. For like her to be looping and not need Obron, you can bring other plug supports. You just gotta up her damage more. It's so funny that she has anti-assassin and plushy broader to fight assassins for that node. Um, but yeah, this is okay. Uh, as, like, especially because assassins have the worst refund, you would want to kill them as easily as possible. Like this is just sandbagging assassins to make sure they stay dead because assassins tend not to die when you want them to. And then they just stab you in the back. MP, so I'm out here glazing Nero. Fully buffed out kit, and there's very few other characters that actually have it. One of the other exceptions is MHX, who happens to also be a saber face. Hmm. But this MP sucks. I'm not going to even think about defending it. And this was a very early year one buff. They buffed it just for damage. There was no other effect, right? It was literally only damage. So I can potentially see them buffing this MP again. I, at this current point, I don't think there's ever a reason to buff her other skills. Maybe this one to make it uh, guaranteed, but that's, oh, that's probably a waste of a buff. If I'm being honest, it, it's a waste of a buff. I would much rather they buff the MP, and even if they don't want to add a, no, a new normal effect, make this happen first, or make it last three turns, either or. Like, because a one turn defense down, sure, it matters a little bit, but it doesn't matter, like, <coughs> there is no ramp up, her MP damage is always gonna be static based on her buffers. <clears throat> sorry but yeah 
I, I just find this MP very lacking. And now it at least has nothing to do with how many hits it has. At least we're beyond that point. If people are going to complain about, like, the hit count on this MP, <clears throat> they have not actually used the character <clears throat> because that was, that, I'm not going to deny that was a huge problem. But with this massive MP gain buff, like, it starts not to matter. She loops just as much as she needs to. Um, and even extra copies, like, if we're talking about looping, the difference between MP1 and MP5 in terms of how much you refund is not going to matter. The reason being is that the only way it would matter is if you didn't kill with MP1. That's the only time it was it wouldn't matter because your refund would be I don't even believe you would get any overkill in the first place. Because the enemy, the enemy dies. Unless it's just one hit of overkill piece of kill. <coughs> so just just by that logic, if you do not kill the if you don't kill the wave, you're fucked anyway and you have to park. If you do kill the wave they're doing you're getting the same refund whether you're at mp5 or mp1 this is my understanding of it i do not have nero on my jp account so i can't fully test this but i'm like 95 percent sure that's how it works with this game uh and how overkill works matt's to level uh you're gonna need a lot of year one shit so much year one stuff and then a pens I find so much more manageable. I'm annoyed with this a little bit, but not that much. <laughs> Bonsi, 15% arts for the party while she's on the field. See, if you really like looping with Saber Shiki, looping with Nero is just going to be like very familiar. For Umu fans, here you go. She is finally able to arts loop. And again, they are either bringing up these old servants to fit modern standards, because I do think this is a very modern buff. I wouldn't say Nero is better than a newer four star uh, AoE uh, saber. I do think for looping, she's at least better than Tomoe. I do think she'd be better than Tomoe. But. Uh, in general, I feel the difficulty for this game is going to start spiking, and I'm honestly looking forward to that because if you guys see me playing on stream, I'm trolling. I'm trolling the team. You will barely ever see me use meta, and if I do, it's for storm pods, not for, like, usually, usually clearing even a bit nodes. So a buff like this where a new another character can farm for themselves, I'm all for it. I would rather use a different character to farm than keep using an, a unit at bond 15 <clears throat> and literally not get anything for it. Because I can just, I can get more characters done that way. So if you already have Umu, rejoice. Yorokobe. Umu is now, her, smug, her smugness has now intensified. Um, now can we get Arya and or any of the other Tamamo 9 because there has just been too much Umu and we need more Mikon in this, uh, conspiracy happening. All right. I'm going to stop the extra team rant about how Tamamo was better than Nero later. All right. Bye. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.